When it comes to qualitative research, trustworthiness is a critically important concept to understand and apply. And chances are, this seemingly simple word means a lot more than you think. In this video, we'll unpack what exactly trustworthiness means within the context of qualitative research and the four key pillars that make a study trustworthy. Let's jump into it. First things first, let's define our terms and explain what we mean when we talk about trustworthiness in qualitative research. At the most foundational level, trustworthiness is about ensuring that your findings are credible and reliable and can be interpreted within context. In other words, it's about accurately representing the realities of your participants and being transparent about how you achieved that. Loosely speaking, trustworthiness in qualitative research is comparable to validity and reliability in quantitative research, but with a focus on capturing the nuances of human experiences. If you're not familiar with the concepts of validity and reliability, we've got an explainer video covering that. The link is in the description. So with our terms defined, the next question is, of course, how do I make my study trustworthy? Well, to build trustworthiness into your qualitative research, you need to focus on four key pillars. These are credibility, transferability, dependability, and confirmability. That's a mouthful, I know. But don't worry, we'll unpack each of these pillars in simple terms and show you how to apply them to your study. By the way, if you are new to formal academic research, be sure to check out our extensive collection of free research templates and checklists. These are tried and trusted resources that will help you fast track your research and writing and avoid all the costly mistakes that we've seen thousands of students make. You can find the links to those down in the description. All right, let's start by unpacking trustworthiness pillar number one, credibility. Simply put, credibility is about making sure your findings correctly reflect the actual perspectives of your participants. In other words, it's about accuracy. Are you capturing what they're trying to say? This is somewhat similar to the concept of validity in quantitative research. So how do you boost credibility in your study? Well, first things first, you need to ensure that you spend enough quality time with participants. Don't rush it. Naturally, the more time you spend with your participants, the better you'll understand their perspectives. This is pretty commonsensical, but all too often we see students trying to rush the research process and then finding that their data simply isn't rich enough to analyze. Ouch. In the world of formal academic research, this practice is called prolonged engagement. Gotta love the fancy academic label, right? The next thing you'll want to do is to double check your findings with participants. In other words, once you've drawn up your findings, take them back to your participants and ask them, does this reflect what you meant? This is called member checking. Again, this is a pretty basic technique, but it gets skipped over all too often and at great expense. Last but not least, wherever possible, you should try to use multiple data sources. For example, you could triangulate your data set by using a mix of interviews, surveys, or observations. If you're not familiar with the concept of triangulation, you'll definitely wanna check out our explainer video covering that. Link in the description. To bring this all together, let's look at a practical example. So let's say you're studying remote workers' experiences of certain phenomena. To enhance the credibility of your study, you would, one, spend enough time with a variety of remote workers to really understand their day-to-day -day realities. Two, share your findings with them to confirm that you've interpreted their experiences correctly. And three, cross-check and compare your interview findings against survey results or notes from observing remote work environments. By taking these steps, you'd help ensure that your research accurately reflects your participants' realities. In other words, that your study is credible. 
Next up, let's look at pillar number two, transferability. Simply put, transferability is about helping other researchers determine whether your findings are relevant to their situation. Unlike quantitative research, where we often aim to generalize results, qualitative research focuses on providing rich, detailed descriptions of a phenomenon within a relatively narrow context. So when presenting qualitative research, you need to help other researchers judge whether your findings apply to their context. In other words, whether your findings are transferable. So how exactly do you enhance transferability? Firstly, you need to provide thick and rich descriptions. In practical terms, this means writing detailed accounts of your research context, participants, and setting. Naturally, the more detail you include about your study's setting, the easier it'll be for others to assess whether your findings are relevant. Secondly, you need to be transparent about your methods and context. In other words, you need to clearly detail your sampling strategy and any other methodological factors that might affect the relevance of your results. As we always say, clarity is key when it comes to your methodology. So make it clear what you did and how you did it. Let's look at a practical example to make this a little more tangible. Imagine you're studying how nurses coped during a crisis at a local hospital. To enhance transferability, you would clearly describe the hospital environment, the specific health crisis, and the demographics of the nurses in your study. You'd address key questions like, who did you interview? How did you select them? And how did you interview them? In other words, you'd paint as vivid a picture as possible so that other researchers could easily determine whether your findings are transferable to the specific hospital crisis they're studying. All right, on to trustworthiness pillar number three, dependability. While the first two pillars focused on accuracy and context, dependability focuses on the stability and consistency of your research process. So simply put, this pillar asks, if someone else were to repeat your study under similar circumstances, would they get similar results? In other words, is your research process dependable? So how do you enhance dependability in your study? Well, the most important thing here is to document your research process in detail. In practical terms, this means keeping a record of every step in your research, from your data collection methods to your analysis techniques. Essentially, you want to provide a clear step-by-step -step recipe that another researcher could easily follow. To take this a step further, you can also make use of an external reviewer or reviewers. You could have someone outside your study review your methods and findings to ensure everything is clear, consistent, and sensible. Apart from increasing dependability, this will also help you identify blind spots and broader issues with your study. So there's more than just one benefit to getting an external reviewer. To recap then, by documenting your research thoroughly, and perhaps even getting an external review, you'll make it easier for others to replicate your study and trust your findings. Last, but certainly not least, let's unpack confirmability, the final key pillar of trustworthiness. Simply put, confirmability is about ensuring that your findings are shaped by your data not by your personal biases. In other words, it's about being transparent about your decisions and showing that your conclusions come from your participants, not your preconceptions. In practical terms, there are a few things that you can do to boost your study's confirmability, and there's quite a bit of overlap with the techniques that we've already looked at. First of all, you want to keep a detailed audit trail. In other words, you need to document everything, from how you collected your data to how you made your interpretations. Triangulation, which we looked at previously, also helps enhance confirmability. So wherever possible, cross-check your data by using multiple sources. Lastly, as with the previous pillar we looked at, it's useful to bring in an external reviewer to examine your audit trail and confirm that your findings are rooted in the data. This external stamp of approval will both help you reduce bias and prove it. Long story short, you want to do whatever you can to reduce the risk of personal bias and demonstrate that your findings are based on the data set itself. 
Of course, as with any research endeavor, it's impossible to remove bias entirely. But these efforts will help you show that your findings are as objective as possible. Whew, we have covered a lot of ground, right? So let's do a quick recap. Trustworthiness in qualitative research rests on four key pillars. Credibility is about reflecting your participants' perspectives accurately. Transferability is about providing enough detail for other researchers to assess your study's relevance to their specific context. Dependability is about ensuring consistency and transparency in your process. And confirmability is about demonstrating that your findings are shaped by the data, not your personal views. As you can see, building trustworthiness is no small task. It takes careful planning and a commitment to transparency. But by putting in the effort and focusing on these four pillars, you'll generate research that others can trust and build upon. If you're working on a dissertation, remember to check out our meaty collection of free templates and checklists. These tried and trusted resources will help you fast track your research and writing and avoid all the costly mistakes that we've seen thousands of students make. You can find the links to those in the description. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to check out this video next. I'll see you there.